Hello everybody and thank you for joining us for the webinar on Dermatologic Ultrasound. For the next minutes we're going to talk about ultrasound imaging of the cutaneous tumoral pathology. Skin cancer represents the most common malignancy in Caucasians and the incidence of both melanoma and non-melanoma skin cancer types is on the rise. Just to get an idea, one in every three cancers diagnosed is skin cancer. And in case of melanoma, we see an increasing incidence, especially among young people. According to VHO data, in the past 10 years, the incidence of melanoma almost doubled. The increase in skin cancer rates in the past years worldwide is associated to many factors, including the transition towards significantly older populations, increased occupational and recreational UV light exposure, indoor tanning, ozone depletion, genetics, and in some cases, immunosuppression. So how do we and how can we assess patients with skin tumors? Well, firstly, we get an impression by visual examination, and then we enhance the diagnostic accuracy by means of dermoscopy, as well as other non-invasive techniques like ultrasound. To have a specific diagnosis, invasive procedures such as biopsies of the region of interest are, however, required. Since skin tumors represent an increasingly important pathology, their early identification is nowadays a major public health issue. In this context, ultrasound represents an important non-invasive method widely used for the assessment of melanoma and non-melanoma skin cancer, as well as tumor recurrences and oncological follow-up. Ultrasound was shown to significantly improve and guide preoperative tumor diagnosis, as well as the oncological and aesthetic outcomes. Ultrasound in the field of dermato-oncology offers us particular descriptive information about the nature of the investigated tumor. By means of grayscale, color, power, spectral Doppler, elastography, and contrast-enhanced ultrasound, we can acquire significant data related to the morphology of the tumoral pathology, its relationship to neighboring structures, the degree and pattern of vascularization, tissue stiffness or uptake patterns of the contrast agent, and flow velocity, orienting us towards a possible diagnosis and optimizing the therapeutical approach. So we basically have several parameters which allow us to characterize a tumoral process. Although ultrasound is highly sensitive, detecting a tumor very accurately, it has a lower specificity, therefore it cannot precisely differentiate between benign or malignant lesions. However, certain morphological aspects and vascular characteristics can be of use in telling apart malignant from benign lesions. The cutaneous tumoral pathology involves not only malignant lesions, but also benign ones. So to offer you an idea about how ultrasound can indeed orient our diagnosis between these two categories, we will see some examples of each. So let's start with some examples of benign tumors of the skin. Sometimes cutaneous or subcutaneous tumors can pose a diagnostic challenge. In a study on merely 200 benign subcutaneous lesions evaluated preoperatively, authors reported that ultrasound was associated with a diagnostic sensitivity of 88% for lipomas and 99% for epidermal cysts when compared to visual inspection alone, which was much less. So basically, ultrasonography of subcutaneous benign lesions greatly increases the reliability of preoperative diagnosis and is also very useful for preoperative examination. Let's have a look at some examples. We have here an epidermal cyst clinically, and what we see in grayscale ultrasound is a round-shaped, well-defined, hypoechoic lesion in the upper hypodermis and dermis. We also notice a posterior acoustic enhancement of the lesion, which is a classical artifact of cystic lesions. Color Doppler ultrasound shows an increased vascularity at the periphery and not in the lesion itself, which is compatible with local inflammatory changes. Now, if the cyst ruptures, we then expect to see a hypoechoic structure, not that regularly shaped anymore, and we can actually see protrusions of hypoechoic material probably keratin, into the surrounding tissue. What we also see is the connection point of the cyst to the skin, the so-called porous, and you can see it here uh, marked by the letter P. Doppler again demonstrates the increased perilesional vascularization. 
again a bump in the supraclavicular region. Grayscale shows a well-defined round-shaped anechoic structure in the dermis and subcutaneous tissue. We see the subclavian vein below. We see the posterior enhancement of the lesion consistent with the cystic lesion. Doppler ultrasound shows that the lesion is not vascularized. Elastography demonstrates the soft nature of the cysts. Like previously mentioned, elastography provides us information regarding tissue stiffness on a color barcode, in this case blue-green being consistent with a soft tissue mass. And now in this case we see a large subcutaneous tumor, clinically consistent with a lipoma. Grayscale ultrasound shows on the left side a subfacial, deep situated, oval shaped structure with echogenic lines in the center, consistent with septae. We see no substantial blood flow signals on color Doppler, and the elastography shows green <coughs> reddish areas suggestive for moderately soft tissue. In this patient, we see a swelling on the right side of her neck. In grayscale, um, we see an oval-shaped, well-defined hypoechoic mass in the subcutaneous tissue. Below lies the external jugular vein. Color Doppler shows the flow within the external jugular vein itself, but not in the tumor. Sonolistography again shows the soft nature of the lipomatose structure. Dermatofibromas are second most common tumors of the skin. High frequency ultrasound and Doppler ultrasound can characterize these tumors and may help in differentiating them from pigmented skin tumors. In grayscale ultrasound, we see um, on the left side an ill defined, hypoechoic, rather fusiform structure situated in the dermis, with a thinning of the dermis at lesional site. Doppler demonstrates only a minimal vascularization. We also see here tiny vessels in the periphery of the lesions in the right um, picture. This case shows a particulated lesion on the arm. We see in dermoscopy erythrocytic pigmentary lacunes and fibrotic areas. It's a vascular tumor definitely. Grayscale ultrasound shows a well demarcated hypoechoic lesion um, with one single centrally placed vascular pedicle in Doppler. Elastography also shows a medium rigidity of the tumor, and by means of contrast enhanced ultrasound, we see a slow washout time of the contrast agent, which is also a criteria for rather benign lesions. Histology confirmed the diagnosis of a pyogenic granuloma. Last but not least, here a classical example of an actinic keratosis as precancerous lesion. Clinics in dermoscopy aspect show a superficial ulceration on an erythematous base, keratin deposits and no intratumoral vessels. Um, ultrasound reveals a hypoechoic mass with an unclear contour, no Doppler signal and no supply vessel. Elastography shows a medium rigid tumor, while contrast enhanced ultrasound dynamics shows a weak and inhomogeneous loading of the contrast agent. Now let's move on to some examples of malignant skin lesions. Sonographic imaging can be successfully used for the preoperative assessment of melanoma and non-melanoma skin cancer, providing us with real-time information related to morphology, vascularization, and elasticity of these tumors, and it also assesses the local infiltration degree into neighboring structures. Furthermore, if used preoperatively, it allows surgeons to prevent damage to adjacent structures and also establish tumor parameters such as horizontal and vertical extension. Some years ago, we established a correlation index between the histological and ultrasonographic values of the tumoral thickness, and we found a really strong correlation between the ultrasonographic index measured by high-frequency sonography and the histological index for basal cell carcinoma and also melanoma subjects. You see here correlations um, as high as 98 or 99%. In some cases, the ultrasonographic depth index can minimally overestimate the tumor size due to the peritumoral inflammatory infiltrate. However, the preoperative assessment, especially of the tumor depth in melanoma patients, can already orient the prognosis and the therapeutic approach. Many studies have assessed the value of ultrasound in most micrographic surgery of non-melanoma skin cancer and found no significant differences between preoperative measurements taken by sonographists and measurements taken by the surgeon during the first most stage. Although they did detect satellite um, basal cell carcinoma lesions by ultrasound, which had been overlooked um, by the clinical examination. 
Other study groups use ultrasound to assign patients with BCC to non-surgical or surgical treatment according to their tumor depth measurement, achieving a very good clearance rate of nearly 100%. In a study on merely 70 melanoma patients, authors managed to distinguish melanomas over 1 mm with a specificity and sensitivity of 92%, allowing the selection of the best course of treatment for the patients. The introduction of new ultrasound contrast agents and ultrasound elastography will probably also further improve the characterization and detection of skin tumors and metastatic lymph nodes and maybe also predict response to therapy. So let's start with BCCs, short for basal cell carcinomas. We see here a clinical example of a solid basal cell carcinoma. In sonography, uh, these tumors appear as well-defined, oval, hypoechoic or heterogeneous dermal structures, and sometimes they can even go deeper. Doppler shows few vascular pedicles with the blood flow rather localized at the bottom of the tumor. A common sonographic finding are these hyperechoic spots which you see in the left picture, which may be a useful sign to differentiating this tumor from other types of skin cancer. These spots appear to correlate on histologic analysis with the presence of horn cysts, microcalcifications, or clusters of apoptotic cells in the center of nests of BCCs. Another basal cell carcinoma on the left nasal wing. We see here a well-shaped hypoechoic structure with rather irregular borders located in the dermis and subcutaneous tissue. We also see the left nasal cartilage, which is not infiltrated by the tumor. And this is a very important information um, for the surgeon who will operate on this patient, just to know how deep he has to go, uh, whether the cartilage is infiltrated or not, for instance. Color Doppler ultrasound shows an increased blood flow in the lesional area, and again, some hyperechoic spots consistent with calcium deposits or horn cysts can also be detected in gray scale. Here, an ulcerated nodular basal cell carcinoma. We see in ultrasound a well-defined hypoechoic exophytic uh, lesion with several hyperechoic spots. The lesion displays regular borders, is superficially ulcerated, and we measured here an um, ultrasonographic thickness of the tumor of 5.5 millimeters. Keep it in mind, please. In Doppler, we see an increased vascularity with an arborizing pattern rather in the lower half of the lesion, and we also identify here two vascular pedicles. Elastography shows an increased rigidity of the tumor mass, and the histological section confirmed the diagnosis of a solid nodular BCC. The histological Breslow index was also 5.5 mm, so in this case, please note the high correspondence um, with the sonographic thickness as we previously mentioned. Generally, keep in mind, basal cell carcinomas are rather well-defined hypoechoic structures with well-defined borders. Of course, there are some exceptions, uh, like the morphia form or infiltrative types of basal cell carcinomas, which can also be ill-defined. Commonly, they present those hyperechoic spots I mentioned before, and these can help you in differentiating BCCs from other um, types of skin cancer. They usually present one to two vascular pedicles rather at the bottom of the tumor and have an increased rigidity. Regular sonographic examination of the skin is recommended to be included in the follow-up of patients with BCCs, um, especially due to the increased risk of local recurrences. Moving on to squamous cell carcinomas, we see here in grayscale ultrasound an ill-defined and irregular hypoechoic structure which affects the dermis and also the uh, muscle below. Color Doppler ultrasound also demonstrates a strong vascularity within the lesion, more increased than the cases of BCC we've seen before. Here we have a case of an ulcerated erythematous nodule of the left ear pinna. Grayscale ultrasound images show a poorly defined hypoechoic mass which presents irregular borders and involves not only the interior but also the posterior aspect of the pinna. The lesion embraces the ear cartilage, which you can see here marked by C. We also see a bit of a shadowing of deeper structures, probably due to the crusts and hyperkeratosis on the surface of the lesion. Color Doppler ultrasound also demonstrates an increased vascularity within the lesion. 
Um, here uh, we have a case of a female patient with two symmetrical exophytic and ulcerated lesions of her cheeks. Grayscale ultrasound reveals hypoechoic lesions involving the epidermis and the dermis with superficial ulcerations. Um, Doppler shows an intense vascularization within both lesions with two or more uh, than two vascular pedicles. Elastography shows an increased rigidity of the tumors and histology confirmed the diagnosis of two squamous cell carcinomas. Finally, one last case of a patient who came to us with a new erythematous nodule on a scar of a previously resected squamous cell carcinoma. Again, we see a highly vascularized rigid tumor in ultrasound consistent with a squamous cell carcinoma relapse, which was indeed confirmed histologically and the patient um, underwent surgery again. To summarize, squamous cell carcinomas are generally rather irregularly shaped hypoechoic tumors, often invading deeper structures. They show a possible shadowing of the deeper parts, uh, mainly due to the hyperkeratosis of those tumors, which may sometimes also lead to an overestimation of the tumor size and depth. In Doppler, they have a more prominent vascularization when compared to basal cell carcinomas, showing two or more vascular pedicles and also an increased rigidity. Due to the risk of development of lymph node metastasis, a local regional lymph node sonography should be um, performed in patients with squamous cell carcinoma. Moving on to melanoma, we have here an exophytic nodular amelanotic ulcerated tumor developed on top of a compound nevus. Grayscale ultrasound shows a well-defined hyperechoic inhomogeneous structure involving the dermis and the hypodermis, with a regular contour and associated with a smaller well-defined echogenic structure corresponding to the compound nevus. We also see that the underlying adipose tissue appears hyperechoic. The sonographic uh, breast low thickness uh, was measured here with 5.7 mm, whereas histology showed an index of 5.5 mm. So you see here a small overestimation of the ultrasonographic breast low index due to the peritumular inflammatory infiltrate. Doppler shows a hypervascularization within the tumor with a central pattern and some blood vessels also displayed in a parallel pattern. We definitely have more than two vascular pedicles, which we can um, identify. Elastography shows the increased rigidity of the tumor, and contrast-enhanced ultrasonography displays a fast, inhomogeneous uptake with a quick washout time of the contrast agent. These are patterns generally seen in malignant tumors. Here are primary patterns generally seen in malignant tumors. Here are primary melanoma with satellite metastasis. We see clinically an exophytic and ulcerated hyperpigmented lesion. Grayscale ultrasound image demonstrates a well-defined fusiform-shaped hypoechoic solid structure that involves the epidermis, dermis, and also the subcutaneous tissue. Notice please the satellite nodule marked with an asterisk located in the subcutaneous tissue adjacent to the main lesion. Color Doppler ultrasound shows an increased vascularity in the lesional area. So basically in this case, we already know prior to surgery that this patient is at least stage 3 melanoma. Now let's have a look at lymph nodes. We see here on the left a normal lymph node, which is ovally shaped, has a centrally placed hilus, compared to a metastatic lymph node on the right, where the contour changes from oval to round, and you see the hilus is peripherically placed by the development of a central metastasis. Doppler of lymph nodes shows on the left side again a benign lymph node with a hilus and central hilar vessels, whereas on the right we have a malignant lymph node with mixed peripheral and also central vascularization, generally a chaotic vascularization we, we can say. Below, again an image of a malignant metastatic axillary lymph node with markedly hypoechoic internal structure and a general chaotic peripheral vascularization. Again, we have here on the left an enlarged fatty lymph node with a polar hypoechoic hypervascular thickening due to partial metastasis. Probably another smaller cortical metastasis is also present. You can see the arrows on, in the left um, image. On the right, a metastatic axillary lymphadenopathy showing a markedly hypoechoic internal structure and a chaotic peripheral vascularization. 
Further below, we have an ultrasound image from a pre-sentinel lymph node biopsy, and we see a focal hypoechoic area detected within an elongated inguinal lymph node. Power Doppler scan demonstrates um, flow signals uh, within the nodule, and the metastasis was unfortunately confirmed histologically. So in our clinic, we perform lymph node sonography in all melanoma patients prior to sentinel node biopsy. So in this particular case, um, upon sonographic suspicion of possible metastasis, we would first order a fine needle aspiration biopsy and not perform sentinel unless this would come back negative. If positive, we would definitely then do a thorough staging of the patient to rule out uh, organ metastasis. So you see, sonography is extremely helpful for the pre-operative and also post-operative follow-up, not only for non-melanoma skin cancer patients, but also for melanoma. According to several studies, ultrasound characteristics of enlarged lymph nodes can be used to distinguish between inflammatory nodes and nodes affected by melanoma with a sensitivity of 100% and a specificity of 96%, which is really, really good. To sum up, melanomas appear in ultrasound as rather fusiform, homogeneous, hypoechoic structures, irregularly shaped with an increased echogenicity of the underlying tissue. Always look for satellite or intrinsic metastasis around the primary tumor, since ultrasound has a really good sensitivity in identifying them. In Doppler, a melanoma usually displays a chaotic, intense vascularization, composed mostly of arterial vessels with low flow. We see um, more than two vascular pedicles, and these tumors are generally rigid in their nature. Local metastases are usually hypo or anechoic, with a variable degree of vascularization. Remember, um, do evaluate lymph nodes since ultrasound also has a very good sensitivity in detecting uh, lymph node metastasis in melanoma patients. Here we see three cases of Merkel cell carcinoma, and if we have a look at grayscale ultrasound, we see these tumors appear as oval-shaped, hypoechoic, solid um, masses with rather irregular borders involving um, the dermis and the subcutaneous tissue. Color Doppler ultrasound um, also shows a prominent vascularity within these tumor masses. Merkel cell carcinomas are generally ill-defined tumors with a mixed echogenicity pattern. Sometimes hypoechoic linear bands and um, digitiform projections can be also seen within the tumor. And again, an increased chaotic central vascularization and an increased stiffness, which are like typical criteria for uh, malignancy, um, are also seen. Last but not least, uh, we have here a case of a Kaposi sarcoma of the thigh with satellite lesions. On the right um, side, you see an ultrasound of one of those satellites, um, and um, we see a hypoechoic, intensely vascularized nodule, which is quite poorly defined. Um, the nodule also involves quite deeper structures, and um, sonolastography demonstrates an increased stiffness of the lesion. At this point, let's just briefly summarize some important sonographic findings in benign and malignant tumors. Well, benign tumors are usually hypoechoic or echoic masses with an inhomogeneous structure. Doppler signal, when present, shows a peripheral circulation model with none, maybe one vascular pedicle. We see a slow intratumoral blood velocity and, in contrast-enhanced ultrasound, a slow washout time of the contrast agent. Malignant tumors are generally hypoechoic inhomogeneous masses with abundant, disorganized, arterial-type vessels disposed not only at the center but also at the periphery of the lesion, with an increased intratumoral arterial velocity. Contrast enhanced ultrasound generally shows an intensely inhomogeneous load of the contrast agent and a quick washout time when compared to benign tumors. Um, just a short annotation regarding the washout time of the contrast agent when using um, contrast-enhanced ultrasound. Well, there is a significant differentiation between the washout times of the different type of lesions, benign or malignant ones. And in one of our studies, um, the analysis of the contrast agent dynamics evidenced, as seen in the graph, a significantly faster washout time in the malignant tumors when compared to benign ones. In conclusion, with the increasing incidence of skin cancer in the world population, improving diagnosis and management is important. Ultrasound is a non-invasive diagnosis procedure which drastically improved patient care in dermatology.
By allowing a non-invasive diagnosis of skin pathology, sonography became an essential part in assessing and treating cutaneous tumoral diseases, allowing us to take a more precise look into the skin and not only at its surface. Sonography can be used to obtain accurate measurements of skin cancer lesion thickness and can define lesion borders. The addition of sonography to the skin cancer preoperative workup may reduce the need for repeated operations and can prevent the removal of excess normal tissue that can lead to scarring and disfigurement. Ultrasound allows us dermatologists to orient our diagnosis towards benign or malignant lesions and formulate a clinical prognosis. It can further delineate metastatic lymph nodes and is essential in the follow-up of malignant tumors in order to avoid recurrences or metastatic disease. Last but not least, ultrasound is an easy and well-accepted method for diagnosis and follow-up in our patients. With this slide, I have reached the end of my talk. I want to thank you. So I have reached the end of my talk. I want to thank you so much for joining our session, and I'm looking forward for an interesting discussion.